All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am recording. Um, Wednesday uh, came to class. We didn't have many in attendance. So what I'm going to start doing, um, as I mentioned to those who I saw on Wednesday, is I'm going to begin recording lectures. And you will be responsible for watching them. And then uh, when we get into class, then you will be responsible for knowing that information. Okay. So I'm going to start recording lectures. We're a little behind. Um, we're supposed to be on chapter nine um, this week. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to record um, the, the last part of chapter eight, which is 8.6, 8-6. Which we're going to talk about power. Uh, on Monday, we talked about and finished off with effect size. Um, and so we, we learned about the hypothesis test. We learned about those four steps. Um, we're going to talk about those four steps. And then we're also going to again talk about, um, again, now, we're going to move again to uh, after we determine what uh, difference was made, if it was significant or not, but specifically for significant differences that we find um, between the population and the sample, then we do the, the effect size to determine what that magnitude of um, the difference is. Right? So we know that there is a difference, but how big, uh, how meaningful is that difference? Okay? The next step is power. Okay, And so power of an experiment or power of a research study is to determine how likely or what the likelihood is that you will receive or get a significant difference if in fact the no hypothesis is true. So we'll talk through um, the last part of chapter eight and moving forward, uh, I will start to record uh, portions of different chapters. And then once you get into class, we'll move on and move forward uh, in those chapters. So this weekend, I'm going to record two lectures, part one and a part two for uh, chapter nine. And I'm going to cover the first half of chapter one, or chapter nine, excuse me. Uh, we're talking about T-test, an introduction to T-test. And then I will cover um, part two, perhaps, on Wednesday. So what we'll do, I'm going to cover the first half for chapter nine. So on Monday, you would have, you would need to have watched chapter nine, uh, that first part of it. And then we'll move into chapter, uh, the second half of chapter nine on Monday. Okay. Then on Wednesday, um, I will try to record on Tuesday portions of chapter 10 to introduce to chapter 10. And then on uh, that following Wednesday, we will, we will be moving on the second half of chapter 10. Okay. So I'll, I'll explain a little more in class, but we got to catch up with a lot of some of the content that we, uh, that we've missed because again, we are a little behind. Um, but I'm sure we'll catch up and I'll make sure that we we have examples, we have different problems that will work, practice problems to make sure that you grasp the concepts. OK, so what I'm going to do again, this is chapter eight dash uh, six power, and then we'll move forward um, in. The lesson. OK. You slideshow Okay, so power. Okay, power. The power of a statistical test. Okay, the power of a statistical test. So again, this power that we're referring to. Again, this is the likelihood or the probability that the test or the hypothesis test that we run will correctly reject a false no hypothesis. So we want to, again, reject that no hypothesis. And when we reject it, we want to make sure that that no hypothesis is indeed false. Uh, we talked about the type 1 error and type 2 error. So type 2 error is rejecting a no hypothesis right? when it is true. right? So we want to make sure that we're rejecting. We are truly rejecting a no hypothesis that is false. Okay, power is that probability that the test will detect a treatment effect when one actually exists. So that is what power is. We wanted to determine the probability that we will detect something that is significant as far as the treatment when an actual treatment effect exists. We'll talk about several factors that influence, uh, like sample size, um, the difference between um, the mean and the population mean and the sample mean. 
We'll talk about some of those differences. We'll talk about how variability impacts power, sample size affects power. So we'll talk about um, some of these influences as we move forward. But again, the common principle behind power is, again, the power is the probability that the test will detect a treatment effect if one really exists. You see the um, equation here. Um, so power equals one minus beta. Beta is the probability of a type two error, right? And again, the type two error is, again, failing to reject a no hypothesis when the no hypothesis is actually true, right? So I want to be able to reject the no hypothesis when I know the hypothesis is false, okay? Power usually is determined before starting the study. So we want to set the number of participants we want. We want to determine what the size of the effect is. And then we also want to determine what that alpha level is, right? So when we, when we increase the alpha level, we're increasing power. When we reduce the alpha level, we're reducing the power. When we, we increase sample size, we increase power. When we reduce the sample size, we reduce power. And the last one, the size of the treatment effect. So the, the larger the size of the treatment effect, the larger the power. The smaller the size of that treatment effect, the smaller the power. And so we want to be able to determine that depending on these different assumptions. And these, again, be the factors that influence power. Okay? But again, we're determining that probability uh, that the results will be significant um, based on again, the treatment um, and its effects. Okay, so here are steps. There are three steps to calculating power. Uh, we have two um, new uh, equations that we'll learn on, on, on calculating power. One of the first equations is M critical, and we'll look at those. I'm going to show you an example on the screen back back here, um, how to calculate the M critical, and then how to compute the Z score for the alternative distribution and power. So what happens is when we have our original population, original population of samples right, uh, of our individual population, then we have a mean of our sample, and we create a sample mean and a distribution. So it's called that alternative distribution. That alternative distribution is compared to the original distribution, right? That's with the null, the null distribution, and we have an alternative distribution based on uh, the mean that we predict is going to be the difference, right? Then we do the power analysis, and that power analysis is going to help us to um, plan our research. It's going to help us to plan what our significance level is going to be, what our uh, the, the sample size is going to be, and the prediction of how large our treatment effect needs to be, so that we get a we can guarantee not guarantee but increase the likelihood that we detect a treatment effect based on those different variables. Okay, so the first step in calculating power is to sketch the distributions for the null and the alternative hypothesis. So you're going to have um, one distribution for the null hypothesis, you'll have another distribution for the alternative hypothesis, and they should overlap in some way. If the effect size is not as large, if you have a large, really, really large effect size, then those, you might not see a large overlap. But if you have a large effect size, maybe you have a smaller uh, standard deviation, smaller variability, then you might see some overlap in those distributions. The second step is you locate the critical regions and compute the M critical. So the critical regions that we know, right, when we have a 5% significance level, a two-tailed test, uh, the Z-score for that two-tailed test is plus or minus 1.96. So we're, we're aware of those critical regions, and then I'll show you how to compute um, the M critical, which is the mean for that critical region. What is that, what is that value? for that critical region that we need to uh, cut off, right? What is that cutoff region, okay? The third step is compute the Z-score or the alternative distribution and find power. Um, the power is the proportion that we'll find um, in the, the, norm, the table that we use, the Z table that we use um, to find the portions of the normal distribution, okay? So we'll walk through that 
and uh, again, a very, very quick power example, and then we'll get out of here, okay? All right, so here is an example of, again, the null hypothesis distribution and the alternative hypothesis distribution. So here is an example where in the original distribution, we have a mean of 80, and in the uh, sample mean, or the sample distribution, or the, or the alternative distribution, we have a mean of 88, right? So there is a difference or an effect of eight points, that differential, okay? The sample for that alternative distribution and the null distribution is n equals four, so there's a sample of four, okay? In these examples, you have a standard error of the mean of five, okay? So the way they did it in the original population, um, the standard deviation was 10, and then they took a sample um, of n equals four, they took the square root, they found the, the, uh, the, standard, the standard error of the mean, which is standard deviation over the square root of n, so 10 uh, over the square root of four, gives me 10 over two, gives me five. Right, so that's how they found uh, their standard error of the mean. Okay, so then you're able to sketch those two distributions. You have your null distribution. This is when the, the null hypothesis is true. Okay, and then you have your alternative distribution, and that is when your uh, null hypothesis is false. Okay, so that's when you and then you see these two regions, the shaded regions, negative 1.96 on the left hand side of the distribution and a positive 1.96 on the right side of the mean, okay? And those shaded regions, that's where you would find that the sample mean, whatever that sample mean is, is going to, you're going to reject it at that level, right? So in this particular case, we're gonna look at that M critical, and that M critical is that mean that if my treatment effect is any greater than that M critical, then I know then I'm going to reject the no hypothesis. Or if it's less than a certain number, then I know that it is going to um, be to the left hand side near the seven, right? So those shaded regions are the proportions that I'm going to get for my, uh, my copy, okay? So again, we're looking at, we're, again, you have to sketch. So when you're sketching it, you're looking at Step one. So that's my step one. You have to find your standard error of the mean. You use your standard error of the mean to then sketch your no high distribution and then to also sketch your alternative distribution. That's step one. Step two is you lo locate your critical regions. So in our example, before I set up uh, my study, I know that I want to use an alpha level or a significance level of 5%. And I know I want to use a two-tailed test. I also know with a 5% significance level that my critical regions, we already know, um, anywhere between Z-score of 1.96, positive 1.96, or a negative 1.96, okay? So my M critical then becomes the mean for the no hypothesis distribution plus the Z-score, which is uh, plus 1.96, and that'll be times the standard error me. Okay, so that is going to give me my end critical. I'm going to show you how we do that next. Okay, then you have step three. You want to compute the z-score for the alternative distribution and then find your power. Okay, so once you get your end critical, you already know that your mean of your alternative distribution is a particular value, and I'll show you how that works. And then you have your standard error of the mean. That's how you calculate your z-score, okay? Once you calculate, you calculate your z-score, you use that z-score then to go to that table. You find uh, the portion in the tail or the body that represents the portion that you see for the shaded region, and that becomes your power, okay? So here are some factors that influence power, okay? When you want to increase your power, you're going to want to increase your effect size, right? So when you increase your effect size, power also increases. The second one, when you have a larger sample size, you produce greater power, 
right? So the larger number of your samples, instead of a sample of four, if I increase that sample to say n equals five, I'm going to increase my, my power. And then the last one is using a one tail test will increase power versus using a two tail test. Because when we talk about one tail versus two tail, the two tail test is reducing the, the critical region, the shaded region. When we have a one tail test, it increases uh, that region. So it makes it a lot easier to find something that is significant. Okay? When you want to decrease power, you reduce your alpha level. Right? So instead of using a 5% significance level, you would use a 1% or 0.01% significance level. And when you reduce your alpha level to those levels, then you reduce power. Okay? Using a two tail test or non directional test decreases power relative to a one tail test. Right? So again, all of those factors influence power, and the combination of them will influence it at different levels. Right? So if you have a very, very high effect size, so your, your, your discrepancy between your, your mean uh, and your, your sample mean and your population mean is very, very large, you may be able to get away with having larger, larger sample size. Um, but if you have a small sample size, then you need a really, really large effect. Because again, all of those play, uh, play and, and are working in conjunction with each other. Okay? So here's an example. Let me go back. I'm going to go through an example really quickly because I think... Yeah, let me go. Let me go through an example really quick. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, and uh, we're going to do an example. Okay, so in the example we saw, there were a few things that we needed. Right. So, actually, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read the example in the textbook. So that you get a better grasp of what is being studied. Okay. Bear with me very quickly. Make sure we get this. Okay. So. Here is the beginning for the example that we're going to do. It says, we start with a normal shape population with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10. Okay, so that is the very first piece of information. So we start with a normal distribution and it has a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 10. Okay, that's the first key. That's the first key. So then it says, this is the distribution of untreated scores in the population. So the mean of 80, that's for the untreated population and the standard deviation of 10, okay? Then what we do is we take a sample, okay? We're gonna take a sample of four, right? So my sample, and equals four. So that n of four, say that's my my group. Okay, I have a this is a math a math score. Okay, math score and a math test. Okay, and I want to see if I give that sample of uh, four students a, a intervention for two weeks if it increases their math score on that very same test. Okay, so I take a sample of four, and what I hypothesize is that when I give that intervention to that sample of four they're gonna score eight points higher than the mean of 80, okay? So their score is gonna be eight points greater than that mean of 80, okay? So it says, if we were to administer that treatment, right, to the, each individual, what is the power of our hypothesis test if a treatment effect is eight point increase? That is, if the treatment will add eight points to each individual score, right? So what is a hypothesis? What is the power of a hypothesis test that has a treatment effect? I'm on meaning my treatment effect is 88. Okay. So now I have a, a difference of eight points. Right. So meaning those who, who were in my, in my intervention, my math intervention, scored eight points higher than the original population after they did the treatment. Okay. So that's what I want to check. I want to check to see 
what that power is, okay? How likely is it that uh, out of all those samples that have been taken, that that value will be found in the critical region, okay? So let's, let's do that example, okay? So the first thing we have to do, the first step, okay? The first step is to sketch the distribution for the null and the alternate hypotheses. And so we've already seen that on the slides. So I'll let you take a step back, um, pause the video and go back to the slides and you'll see um, that null distribution and you'll see the alternative distribution, okay? They'll be spelled out pretty easily, okay? So you'll see the, the Z score, you'll also see uh, you know, the, one plus, the negative 1.96 and the positive plus 1.96 and you'll see how, how it the overlap um, in the curve, okay? So then the second piece is to locate the critical regions and compute the M critical. So at the current moment, we know what our critical regions are, right? In that uh, sketch that we sketched, what you're going to do is, and actually what I'll do is I will go back and I'll show you to share my screen. Let's do this. Okay, so let me go back here. So here is the sketch. All right, this is step one. So what they did was they sketched. Let me do this really quick. Let's keep the scene. to be able to show this. Maybe it's not going to work for me. Let me see something. Um, no, this is good. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. What I'm going to do, let's see. I'm trying to find the pointer, but if I can't find the pointer, I'll just point it on with the cursor. So follow my cursor, right? So we have our overlap here. We have this is the null distribution. It has a mean of 80, right? That's the that's the original population. Then you have a your alternative population or distribution, right, with a mean of 88. So my group of four students, they scored. I'm, I'm predicting that they're going to score eight point difference, right? Eight points greater than the mean, okay, the original mean, right? So then they, they asked you to like, locate the critical region, right? So here is the critical region. These, these are the critical regions, the orange region here. Those are the critical regions, and we locate them based on the z-score. So we have a 5% significance level, but z-score z is a plus or minus 1.96. So here on the left-hand side, that's my critical region to the left here, and my critical region to the right here. Um, is located in that, in that region plus 1.96, okay? So that is step one, okay? Step two, again, we locate the critical regions and then we compute the M critical. So my M critical, this is the M critical equation. I'm just gonna say M R C R I Z, okay? So that is this equation. It's going to use H zero or H null plus Z score times my standard error of the mean. Okay. So that is my M critical. I need to determine what my M critical is. And so if I want to determine what my M critical is, then I have to find this. I haven't found my standard error of the mean yet. So in order to find my standard error of the mean, you know the standard error of the mean is this equation. Okay, so it's going to be 10 over the square root of 4 equals 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Okay, so that is standard deviation over the square root of four gives me five, okay? So now I have all of my information. I have all the information I need to calculate my M critical, right? I have my H0, which will be this, 80. I have my Z score, 
which would be the 1.96, because again, I'm looking at an increase in eight points, and then I have my standard error of the mean. Okay, with all that information, now we can calculate my grid. And grid equals 80 plus 1.96 times 5. Okay. Do that all the math. We get 89.8. Okay. So that is the M critical. Okay. Once you get your M critical, then we move on to the next step. Okay. All right. So that's step two. That is step two. You need some time to pause that for that right there. But we're going to move on to step three. Okay. Step three is compute the Z score for the alternative dis distribution and find power. Okay. So what we're going to do is erase this. I'll leave all the stuff on the side here. But erase this section. Right? All right. So again, second, third step, compute the z-score for the alternative distribution and then find power. Okay? So this is the z-score formula for power. Um, z equals m crit critical minus the mean of the alternative distribution mean alt over my standard error of the mean. Okay? That is the equation to find my z-score for my alternative distribution, okay? All right, so now I have all of this information. I have my M critical, right, which was, let me put that down here, M crit 89.80. I have my mean of my alternative distribution there, right? And then I have and the mean, which is five. Okay? All right. So now I just plug it in. Z equals M critical 89.80 minus 88 over five. Gives me. 89.80 minus 88, one, oh, erase this, gives me 1.80 over 5, which then gives me 0 0.36, Z equals 0 0.36. Right. So then what do I do now? What do I do now? Okay, so what you do now is you go to the table. I'm gonna look in the back of the back of our textbook. You go to the table, the paper that we that we we've been using for the last couple of weeks. Let me find that in the back of the text really quickly. All right. So what you will do, you're going to go to your Z table, get a normal table. You're going to locate 0.36. And I want you to remember where 0.36 is located. All right. So let's uh, let's go back. Okay. Let's go back. Share my screen again so you can see. Okay, so I got 1.96. My M critical was 88.9 or 89.880, right? So then I'm looking, that is my 
M critical Z score for this alternative distribution. So now I'm looking for the proportion of that shaded region to the right, to the right of the 89.80 to that, that orange shaded region. What proportion is that? Okay. So when I go looking for 3.36, let me stop sharing. So when I go look for 0.36, I'm going to the unit normal table. I'm going down to 0.36, and I locate the portion in the tail because I'm looking for everything to the right of, again, this value, that 89.80 eight, was that shaded region. So again, that percentage is 0.3594. Okay. So the proportion. Okay. So that is my proportion. Okay. So what that tells me, what that tells me is there's a relatively small chance only a 40% a chance, okay? Only uh, uh, 35, excuse me. I think it is 35.94, excuse me. 35. So it's only a 36% chance that we are going to reject the no hypothesis, given the information provided. Okay, And so what will happen is, before I do the study, before I do the hypothesis test, I will use my sample size. I will, I will got to guess what that treatment effect is going to be. So I guess that my, my treatment effect would have an eight-point difference. Right. So I made that guess. So with that information that I was provided, Right now, I know that I only have a 36 percent, 36 percent chance to uh, find something that's significant, right? Or a 30, 36 percent chance of rejecting the no hypothesis, meaning that there was a significant treatment effect, right? One of the reasons why we might not have gotten something that was significant, or something that was a, a greater likelihood of getting something that was significant, is because of this. That sample size is extremely small, right? So again, the smaller the sample size, the lower the power, right? But if we increase the sample size, we will increase power. So let's do that. Let's do that. Because, again, with that 35.94%, again, out of all the possible sample means, only 36% of those sample means are going to be in that critical region. And I want something a little, a little bit larger. I want a larger percentage, a larger proportion of sample means to fall in the critical region. Because that is when I know that I'll find something significant. So let's do this. We're going to increase the sample size in this next example, okay? To see what happens when we increase the sample size. The only thing we're going to change, the only thing that we're going to change is this value, okay? This value is going to change, this value will change, and then my M critical value will also change, okay? Let me plug in my computer real quick so that I don't go dead. Yeah. All right. So let me erase or erase pretty much everything. Yeah, I'll raise it. Okay. Let me do this. Right. So now we're going to go from 
and NF4, right? The original population will remain the same with a mean of 80, standard deviation of 10. We're still going to predict that my treatment, my treatment effect will be, will increase that mean by 80. Okay, so my mean will be 88. So now what we're gonna do, instead of doing four, four students, we're gonna do 25 students, okay? So now we have a sample size of 25. And I'm just gonna go through the steps. Go through the steps once more to let you see how, how that works, all right? All right, I'm going to place again. So, again, sketch the sketch the distribution. All right, then we're going to, let me show you what the distribution is going to look like. So, we're going to sketch the distribution again, and I'm going to show you, the first thing we're going to do, though, is we've got to find our standard error of the mean, right? So, now, my standard error of the mean, I'm just going to write it out. So, that's over a square root of n. Which then becomes got 10 square root of 5 gives me 10 over 5, which gives me 2. Okay. So now I know that I have a standard error of the mean of 2. Let me do that down here. Standard error of the mean equals. So I know that I decreased my standard error of the mean because we know that when we increase our sample size, we increase our variability, right? So again, that is that, okay? So then let me share my screen with you real quick. Share, okay? So let me find, so this is what happens when I increase the sample size. So now you see, let's go back here. When I had an N of four, this is the amount of overlap for the alternative distribution. It was only 36%, right? 36%. But when I decrease, when I increase the sample size, I decrease the variability and I increase the power by shrinking those distributions. All right, so I have a, a sample size of five or 25. And now even with that same effect size, you see how much overlap in that alternative distribution there is, right? So everything in this shaded region underneath this curve, again, we see now that that is a huge difference in the, the number or the proportion of the, the distribution that is shaded, okay? So with that, again, that's sketching the distribution, all right? Let me go back. And we're going to get our M critical. We're going to get our Z score. And then I'll show you how those numbers change. Okay. So we know that our standard, standard error of the mean is two. Okay. So now I need to get my M critical. M crit. equals 80 plus 1.96 times 2, okay, equals 83.92, okay, so that's my new input, I'm putting that down here, so 83.92, okay. So now again, I have a new M critical. I have a new M critical. So with that new M critical, now I can compute my Z score again. I can compute the Z score. Let me erase this. Okay. And then I gotta I gotta compute my Z score. Let's go ahead and compute the Z score. So we want M critical, which is 83. 0.92 minus 88, which is the alternative hypothesis, me over 2. That's going to get me negative 
or 0, 8 over 2, which gives me a z of negative 2.0. So we went from our first example with the sample size of 4, with 0.36 for the z-score, to a negative 2.04. Okay. So now what do I do? All right. Given that information, given that information, I go to the back of the book, right, or to your unit normal table that you have. You find 2.04. And since I'm looking for, let's go back and let me show you. Let me share the screen real quick so you can see it. Since I'm looking for the proportion for the shaded region to everything to the right of it, right? Everything to the right of the 83. 0.92. So everything to, to the right of that, that this distribution right here, right, with that cutoff, then I'm looking for the body. Looking for everything in the body. Every, nothing in the tail, everything in the body. I go to 2.04. 2.04 and everything in the body is 0.9793. Right, so that is a new proportion. Point oh. equals point nine seven nine four nine seven point percent. So what that is telling me is that I have a large chance almost a 100% chance, 98% chance of rejecting the no hypothesis with the sample, the difference in the effect size, so that eight point difference, the uh, variability, right? All of that plays into account. And so I have a 98% chance of rejecting the no hypothesis, which is a greater, a greater chance based on just increasing the sample size, okay? So that is power. Okay, that is power. If I were doing what we call a power analysis, I would look at sample size, I would look at the effect size or the difference or the discrepancy between population mean and my sample mean, and I'd make that hypothesis. How, how big would that difference need to be in order to reject the no hypothesis? So again, I went from 36% chance of rejecting the no hypothesis with a, a, a sample, sample size of four, to 98% chance of rejecting the no hypothesis with a sample size 25, okay? So let's go back to the slides, and then I'll let you all um, head on out. Okay. So, again, this is... This is a, an example where we didn't increase the sample size, but we increased the effect size, okay? So we kept everything the same um, from the original problem. So all we did was we increased the sample size from, I mean, we increased the effect size from eight to 16. And I won't go through that example. I could do several iterations of this to show how, um, how the percentage will change, and how the power will change. But again, by increasing the effect size from eight points to 16 points, so instead of going up from um, just the 88, it went up to 96, right? So that was a larger effect. Having a larger effect increases the power. So increasing the sample size gave us a power, power score, power percentage of 97%, 98%. Increasing the effect size um, by those six points, 16 points, excuse me, increases the power to 89.25%. So again, you're increasing the likelihood that you're going to reject the normal hypothesis just based on increasing the effect, okay, the point effect, right? 
you kept everything the same. Sample mean of four, uh, alpha level of five percent, two tail test. The only difference is increasing the eight, the, the point effect. And so you see a larger point effect increases your power, just like we saw with those again, the impact of power increasing sample size, increasing the effect, all of that increases your power. Okay. So what happens if you're looking for a decrease in a score, right? Very, very similar. Very, very similar. It's just showing it on the other end, right? So we looked at an increase, but what happens if you want to see a decrease, right? So this distribution for power analysis, when the researcher assumes that the treatment will cause a 20% or 20 point decrease and not a eight point increase or 16 point increase, it's everything to the left, right? So the NOAA distribution is on the right-hand side, and the alternative distribution is on the left-hand side. Whereas when you're looking for an increase, the NOAA process will be on the left-hand side, the alternative distribution will be on the right-hand side, and you would be looking for the, the shaded region in that alternative distribution on, again, either side, left or right. Okay, so here is some, some learning tips. Okay, the first one says, the power of a statistical test is the probability of what? The probability of what? A, B, C, or D. You can pause the video, but the answer to that question is C, right? Power of a statistical test is the probability of rejecting a false no hypothesis, right? You want to reject a false no hypothesis or just reject the no hypothesis, right? And it is a false one. That's what we hope. That's the prayer. Okay. True or false? It says Cohen's D is used because alone a hypothesis test does not measure the size of the treatment effect. And the second one is lowering the alpha level from 5% to 1% will increase the power of a statistical test. You can pause it. I'm going to reveal the answers next. So the first one was true, right? So we go back. The Cohen's D, again, we do not and are not measuring the size of the treatment effect. We're just measuring the difference between the mean and the standard, the, the mean of the population, and the mean of the sample. But we want to see the magnitude of the treatment effect. And so that's why we use Cohen's D for effect size. The second one is false because when you decrease the alpha level, the, uh, the power decreases. Right. So when you increase the alpha level, you increase out, you increase the power. When you decrease the alpha level from five percent to one percent, then you decrease your power. Right. So it is less likely that your no hypothesis will be your no hypothesis will be rejected with a small. Power. Okay. So again, just to recap, four steps of hypothesis testing. You got state the hypotheses. Set the criteria, collect data, compute sample statistics, and make a decision. But even before this, we'll go back. So if we wanted to determine what uh, level of sample size, what the prediction for the effect size should be, then we need to use the first step. This is done before, right? So we want to plan the research. We're going to do these first steps. So we want to sketch the distribution for the null. And the alternative hypothesis. We want to locate the critical region, compute the M critical, and then compute the Z score, and then find the power. Okay. Once I find the power, then I know that I'm going to use a specific significance level, right? So I say I, I'm going to use 5%. I know I'm going to use uh, a certain sample size, and then I can move forward with setting the hypotheses, computing the data. And then collecting the data, computing the computing the, the sample statistics, and then making your decision. Okay. Uh, I posted some slides, and I'll post these slides. There are three problems um, that you can practice. Okay, three problems that you can practice on. Um, you will be required on the exam um, to do a power test, power analysis. I'll give you all the parameters. We'll just have to calculate the M critical and then Z score and then find the level of power. Right? You will be required to do that. So 
Again, be mindful of that as we move forward. Okay? That's problem one. You also have problem two. And then you have problem three. Okay, so all of these, again, we've done, we did the first two, we did problem three already. So again, go over this again, make sure that you know how to calculate power because you will be asked to calculate power on the exam. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. All right, so that is, that is chapter eight. Okay, that's the end of chapter eight. I'm hoping that, again, review the video. Uh, this information will be covered on chapter eight. On the, on, the, on the exam, okay? And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna cover chapter nine. Again, I'm gonna record a lecture for the first part of chapter nine. Um, you should review that, or watch that um, this weekend, um, because on Monday, we're gonna move forward. And I'm gonna give you a, a brief introduction of what uh, you know the T-test is, um, an introduction to T-test, and then we'll move forward um, from there, okay? All right, well, I hope you all have a great weekend. And we will see you next time. Take care.